All right, so we our process is um, a little bit different. We, um, in InterArts, we devise our own performances. We start with um, our own concepts, which the students come up with, and we have our own writers and our own production designers, and we basically do everything from the ground up, and all people in InterArts have different skills, so it's naturally very interdisciplinary. Um, so I thought this is the perfect opportunity to work with um, uh, Tamir Hengelman, who is our guest artist. Uh, he is a, a, a renowned jazz pianist, but he's also creates um, interdisciplinary magic as well. And he, um, so we were able to um, be joined by some musicians and dancers. The fashion department as well have um, joined us to create uh, a truly interdisciplinary performance. <laughs> so we all work together in a very short space of time. I don't know if you guys noticed that um, we have a full moon tonight. Oh, yeah. And it has influ very much influenced our performance. <laughs> 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 suggestions for characters that they wanted to play. And my job was to try to think, okay, how can we develop this? How can we tie it all together? And they would come up with more things and we would gradually build. But the fun challenge was getting here 48, 48 hours before the show, knowing that we had a lot more threads to, to tie together and that everybody was going to do what they needed to do to, to make it happen. And there's something magical when you go up on this hill. The creativity, the seclusion, the focus, the collaboration, the listening to each other that really made that other show happen and is really gonna make this show happen. And I wanna really commend all the students that, you know, some, some of these students were not even in the show until about a day ago when I would drive and see some musician walk by with their instrument and say, hey, would you like to join this show? <laughs> and it involves some improvisation. And they say, well, where's the score? And I say, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for taking a chance on this process. I want you all to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to, in your mind's eyes, elevate yourselves above this school building and maybe rise about 20 feet or 100 feet. Take a look at the, the hill and the mountain and the, the canyons all around us and feel the, the weather, the crazy weather that we've had tonight. And take a look up at the moon and all that it can hold and all the stories that it can tell. And with that, I'd like to introduce to us August, who will be our narrator for the first portion of tonight's Moon Tales. thunderstorms and the hail coming up the hill, so I'm glad that you guys were lucky enough to make it. And so tonight on this full moon, we're going to do something a little bit different, and this night will be consisting of moon tales.
our first story tonight it takes place in ancient Greece. It is a story about love, a story about possession, and it is a story about the moon. But tonight, the moon isn't just some rock in the sky. Tonight, for this moment, the moon is a goddess who's about to find madly in love. so that Selene would never be without him. Thank you. 
thank you. Can we get another round of applause? <laughs> now for our next tale, we will be traveling to Algeria, and I will tell you the tale of Tears of the Moon. Long, long ago, there was a boy who sulked, but could not cry. Places, drums. He 
Thank you. Okay. So, for our last tale, we will be traveling to China. And inside of this tale, we will be having the death of sons, a gift from the gods, love, betrayal, and most spectacularly of all, the origin of the Chinese moon goddess, Shang Yi. But as you all know, the moon has several phases. So that kind of gives you an idea of how our main character, Shang Yi, will be. When the earth was oh so young, there were 10 suns in the sky. It was extremely hot all the time, and it was very difficult to have any crops being made, and lots of populations were in danger. But one day, a skilled archer named Yu Yi decided that enough was enough. He raised his bow to the heavens and shot down nine of the ten suns. Ultimately, Hu Yi decided to keep the elixir under his bed. Shang 
during the mid-autumn festival.
Jeffrey Steiger. This is Elena. How may I help you? Elena, it's Kate. I want to know if you can come back home early because I'm cold and you want to go home and take some drinks. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you letting him come over? Because you want to celebrate it. And after all, I got the amazing role. Well, Kate, it's just I don't want him to be alone with you. Uh, it's, it's okay. We just have to celebrate it. It's fine. I mean, I just started my shift. I can't go right now. I, I know, but I really want you to be here with me. You know how he is when he's drunk. Remember oh. last one? Mm -hmm. Kate, sh he shouldn't be there in your apartment. Oh. You can be so cultured sometimes. You can be the only person I talk to. Kate, you're being ridiculous. Do you hear yourself? I'm just trying to look out for you. That's how the film industry works, Elena. And if you really care about me, you will come home and sit it with us. I feel like Gwen is the only person who really care about me. What do you mean that's how the film industry works? Of course I care about you. That's why I'm worried. I just want you to be here with me. If you don't want this fight, I don't even know why I called you. <laughs> Well, and we're talking about you. 
and he said like, hey, remember this girl? She was French, right? And I was like, yeah, she was French, because everybody loves French people, right? <laughs> 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> 